The Cause and Cure of Corruption in Public by Henry Ward Beecher The love of country is a truly heroic and far from romantic notion of patriotism. There are many men who love their country so much that they will die for it in battle, but not enough to serve it truthfully in peace. Our young men, if foreign men surprise our flag, will beat down all such aggression. But then, will they give their life to the noble service of purity? And for it, will they refuse to be biased? Will each of them attempt to make one citizen like an iron link in a chain perfect? Too many of our young men are brought up to think that parties are of more use to them than country. That they can employ them to promote their own personal welfare. They see in politics a way of making money and they accept it with all its plottings and underminings and various iniquities. So they serve themselves while their fellow men and the community itself are suffering. Take, for instance, life in Brooklyn. Look at the way in which men will take advantage of the necessities of the whole community. If it is in the power of men to get possession of an article which is indispensable to the community and put three, four, five hundred percent profit on it, they will do it. And there is no redress for such extortion. If men can charge five or six times the value of a thing, or levy blackmail, they do not lose the opportunity. If men can milk their fellow men, stealing in a safe way their substance, no sense of right or justice will prevent them from doing it. And these things we pretend not to see. If a man who is ignorant and corrupt is elected to office, we take our hats off to him because he may be able to lower our taxes. And so men are robbing the community all the way through. They organize a system of spoils by a majority here and there, and they are filled full of deception. And by and by, when a man a little more comprehensive and organized a little more skillfully, carries off the very gates of the treasury, as did Samson, the gates of Gaza, on his back. We atone for our misdeeds by crying out, Thief! 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 As if that man were more a thief than you are. As if that man stole and you did not steal. As if he connived at stealing, and you did not connive at stealing. Such men are boils appearing on the body politic. You are the body, and they are the boils. Look at the deeds of these men, and you will see yourself and the way you have been acting. Only you are disguising it and making believe you did not, or not admitting it to yourself. We talk about a yellow-covered literature. If God were to turn the leaves of the book of your inward life, of your vain desires, of your burning avarice, of your turgivisations, of your ten thousand connivances with dishonesty, and God were to read that book, it would be the blackest lettered literature that you ever saw. These things are true, and they are things which it behooves every good citizen to consider. Not that these public criminals are not criminals. We should make examples of these men. They should be tried and convicted and punished. They should be punished not only by public sentiment, but by public law. If there was ever a case for punishment, this is one. 
But that is not going to cure evil. The law cannot cure it. You must cure it. A part of the cure lies in your heart. A part of it in your family. A part of it in the common schools. A part of it in the newspapers. A part of it here in this place. And in me. As your public teacher. A part of it in the churches. And a part of it in the community. We must all of us take hold in earnest in this matter. It will not be sufficient to cleanse the outside of affairs and leave the inside full of corruption. I do not think that a momentary clapping of the hands and hurrahing and going back then, every man to his business and forgetting the evil will ever cleanse the body politic. Fathers, mothers, fellow citizens, men, brethren, countrymen, is it not time to come together for more integrity, for more parity in business and politics and statesmanship, for a higher standard of morals in everything and everywhere, for more noble manhood, for a better life, serving God by temporal things as well as by prayers and hymns and spiritual songs. If there shall be such a correction of public sentiment, not only will there be less corruption, but there will be less tendency of the body politic to break out in these sores and consummate themselves. There is no showy service that I call you to. I call you to no public demonstrations or meetings. I simply call you to the humble and necessary work of self-examination. I press upon you the duties of manhood. I urge you to bear witness to truth and honor and integrity. I hold up before you the need of purifying the house, the store, and everything you touch in politics or public affairs. And it is not possible that living men should do that and adhere to it and exert themselves for it without soon finding that the tide is turning and that we have gone over this depression and that the whole system has risen to a higher tone and a healthier condition. May God inspire us to true patriotism as a part of our piety. And after spending the remainder of our years in usefulness here, may we rise to a nobler service in the world beyond.